They will never say solitary confinement. They will say administration segregation. They will say protective custody. They will say involuntary protective custody. They will say security threat group. They will say CPSU, which is the Central Punitive Segregation Unit. They have all these names, control management units, except for what it is, extreme isolation. How I ended up in solitary confinement is a unique process of abuse to the only system that they have to address problematic behavior in people and social dilemmas. I'm confined to Rikers Island because of other charges. And this dorm just has nothing there for people to do. A TV, that's it. So you're putting people in a small space. A fight broke out, guess what? Everybody went to the box. Literally everybody who lived in the tier, in the dorm, everybody went to the box. So it's a process called pre-hearing detention. And they send you to the box, you're in there for 24 hours a day, and during that period, then the guard has two days to write the ticket, and then they have another two days to address it and bring it to you. So for about four or five days, you're in this solitary confinement until they could say, oh, you wasn't involved with the fight, we got the report back, or whatever. But this is the way that they address it, is to contain everyone first, immediately, and then resolve it and figure it out later. So while I'm in solitary, uh, a friend of my father sent me a book called Revolutionary Suicide. And the book is any educational material, anything written by like the Black Panthers or any social or any black history or any type of education materials are all deemed threats to institutional safety. So they kept me there for that reason. And then after that, it was just a series of tickets until they finally kicked me off the island and sent me to MCC. Um, I was originally there because I was involved in this, I was in the vicinity of this incident. And then I got 90 days for the book. And then of course I got because someone from the outside, to totally. I have no control of who sent me items. So you received a book in the mail mm -hmm. and you, by receiving it, they said that's an offense, 90 more days mm -hmm. for you. Possession of um, unauthorized items, disobeying a direct order because I was mysteriously supposed to know who was sending me a book and that landed me $50 ticket in the box. And that started my time. And so tell me some of the other tickets, the infractions mm -hmm. you did, what were the kinds of things that kept you in solitary confinement? Not coming out of the shower in time. So they give you two minute showers once or twice a week. Wash, rinse, repeat, that's all you're allowed to do. And I wasn't dressed when the officer came, he got upset, so he left me in there. Handcuffed in the shower for about four or five hours. And then when the next shift came in, they wrote me a ticket again for disobeying a direct order. And now they put me in a different cell, the full containment cell, which has a plexiglass box on the slot. So that, it's crazy because there's no human contact allowed. So I had further punishments for that. And what's the impact, especially to a young person, either a, a minor or a young person? Right. What do you think the overall, you use the word damage, is to somebody of, of excessive amounts of self? Well, number one, it generally states that you don't care. The country doesn't care, and you're saying, it's just like never releasing someone on parole. That's saying that there is no rehabilitative system inside of facilities, that the facilities do not correct anything. So when you tell a person that they're never going home or you keep denying them parole without giving them any type of reason that they have been denied, you're saying that they cannot be changed. That's what you're telling a person. But it's even more further when you're telling a young person that not only will I willing you damage you, I don't care about what happens to you. So it's society really physically turning its back on our next generation of our citizens. Also, it is also saying that nobody cares about you and we can do what we want to do to you. But what you're actually doing is you're creating the next generation of reoffenders. You're ensuring recidivism, but you're also damaging a person, another human being, permanently. And children are smart. All these reports are floating around, right? All these doctors' reports, all these psychological reports. And what does this say? It's telling a child that, yeah, we know we're intentionally hurting you but we don't care because you are expendable. Talk a little bit about mental illness and what solitary confinement does to a young person who has any kind of mental illness. I mean, I've seen, like I've tried to communicate with some of the younger kids on the block, on the cell block. Um, it's hard, man, because they don't even understand their condition, right? You have a child, teenagers are just not naturally hyperactive. I mean, if I had early energy, I'd probably be doing a lot more. But imagine containing that energy and imagine having a disorder where you have an exponent amount of energy, an exponent amount, and confining that person to a small space. I've seen kids banging their hands on the walls, driving themselves crazy, ramming themselves against the door because they can't get attention or medical attention. And then I've also seen them punished for sharing a magazine, 
before talking to the next person. Just the normal human interaction when you're being tortured. When people are going through a huge emotional depression states or um, states of explosive nature, right? These are developing minds that we're talking about. We're not talking about a fully fledged in, in, in adult who's stuck in their ways. We're talking about a developing child and we're containing them into a small confined space and damaging them purposely. And then telling them continuously more punishment when they act out against that or when they react to that or when they respond to that. So we have to start cheating children like children and humans like humans. And those simple solutions sound simple, but we have a lot of laws written against that. So I think that's the first steps.